as we look at the daycare movement. Newsroom 7 brings you regional reports for more local news coverage with reporters based where the news breaks. In the north, Paul Reese has the news from the towns and cities that affect you. In the west, Tanya Kay covers that area with expanded and live reports for all fast-breaking stories. And in the south, Bureau Chief Mike Levitt has complete reports on all the news from Brockton to Cape Cod. The regional reports, because there's more to New England than just Boston. Weeknights on Newsroom 7. Make a joyful noise for the Lord. Tonight, Governor King talks about the resignation of his transportation secretary. And a jailed suspect is going to be charged with two more rapes in the Brighton-Alston area. Those stories and more coming up here in Newsroom 7 at 11. Lots of people never see the natural goodness of rice in the field like I do, or even on their plate. Here, I'll show you what I mean. Most rice companies strip away the natural goodness of the bran layer. Well, Uncle Ben's converted bran rice put a stop to that, because Uncle Ben's found a way no one else found to seal in this natural goodness for a taste and texture no other rice has. If you've never enjoyed the natural goodness of rice, try Uncle Ben's, the one with natural goodness sealed in. Quit smoking. Call the smoker's quit line. This is the Emmy Award-winning Newsroom 7 with John Henning and Mary Richardson. Bob Gamir has sports and meteorologist Harvey Leonard the weather. Good evening. Here's what's happening this Friday night, February 16th. Tonight, Massachusetts Governor Edward J. King is brushing off the question of whether his insurance commissioner, Stephen Clifford, has been hounded out of office by the news media. Clifford, who resigned today under fire after only a month in office, sent a letter to the governor charging the media with launching unreasonable and unfair attacks against him. Newsroom 7's Lloyd Kramer is here now with Governor King's reaction to Clifford's charge. The chief controversy surrounding the 43-year-old Clifford involved his past association with George Davis, a lawyer with whom Clifford once shared an office and who's been convicted of conspiracy to commit arson. Clifford had also been involved in two real estate transactions with Davis. Well, tonight, after first saying it's immaterial whether the news media had in fact hounded Clifford out of office, Governor King left little doubt as to what he would have done had he known about all of this earlier. If you had been aware of uh, his association with George Davis at the time of his appointment, would you have appointed him? I would think that we would not have. In his letter of resignation, Clifford, who's also been criticized lately by some legislators for having too much of a pro-insurance bias and whose ownership of a Beacon Hill condominium has also drawn fire, said... I reiterate that I have done nothing wrong and insist that I have been unfairly attacked by innuendo and improper inference. Throughout the week, Clifford has been unavailable for comment on these issues, and tonight he was apparently not at his Boston apartment to answer questions about his decision. Meantime, at the State House Stephen earlier in the day, the governor's chief spokesman, Ron Brin, told reporters the media had generally not been unfair to Clifford, and he said investigations into Clifford's conduct had ended upon the resignation. So Clifford becomes the second cabinet officer to resign under fire. Elder Affairs Secretary Stephen Guptill also resigned last month, and tonight the governor continued to defend his personnel checks. Are you concerned that some of your security checks uh, have not been sufficient in the first uh, seven weeks of your administration? Well, we were using the routine system that had been in effect for years to make the checks. Uh, they did not uncover that resume deficiency. Uh, now, then for a while we stopped, but asked the people all of those questions ourselves because we didn't want to have people who may not be appointed to a job uh, having their names in the press. There were some leaks, and that's the reason we stopped until after the people were appointed. And now we have a, uh, a system that we think is improved. King also says tonight he'll be naming a new insurance commissioner next week, possibly on Tuesday. Mary? Thank you, Lloyd. The suspect in two of the series of rapes in Austin and Brighton is going to be charged now with two more. Newsroom 7 has learned tonight that in a police lineup, two of the other victims identified a suspect who's already in custody. 37-year-old Willie Sanders of Dorchester was positively identified by not only the two additional victims, but also by the victims in the rapes for which he is already charged. 
Up until today, those women had only identified Sanders from photographs. A fifth rape victim failed to identify anyone in the lineup. The sixth victim was unable to attend today's police identification session. Sanders has entered not guilty pleas to the first two rape charges and is being held in the Charles Street Jail on $50,000 bail. It's believed that Sanders will be indicted and arraigned on two more rape charges toward the middle of next week. John? No arrests have been made yet in connection with the abduction this morning of a McDonald's restaurant manager and his security guard outside a Roslindale bank. The pair were taken prisoner by two men, one armed with a revolver, who made their getaway in the guard's car. After about 30 minutes of aimless driving, the holdup men took $400 in change, which had been destined for the restaurant, and $500 in cash from the store manager and the guard. Both men were released unharmed. A 16-year-old Dorchester youth was stabbed to death last night in a killing police say may have been inspired by a movie called The Warriors. 16-year-old Martin Yakabowitz of Beach Street was stabbed with a hunting knife at Fields Corner in a gang fight. Many of those involved, including the murder suspects, Mark Rogers, 19 years old, and Michael Barrett, 18 years old, both of Dorchester, had seen the film The Warriors prior to the killing. That film, which depicts gang warfare, has touched off disturbances after showings in a number of other cities. In Boston, both suspects in a shootout on the common yesterday were arraigned. 20-year-old Wayne Ring of Hyde Park is charged with armed robbery and carrying a firearm. He's free on $25,000 bail tonight. The second suspect, 22-year-old Stephen Carroll of Hyde Park, was arraigned in his room at Massachusetts General Hospital. Carroll was wounded after a holdup at Homer's Jewelry Store in downtown Boston yesterday. A third man, 19-year-old Donald Sawizzi of Hyde Park, was killed in an exchange of gunfire with Boston police. Carroll is being held in $50,000 bail. With the bitter cold weather we've been having, complaints have been pouring in all this week to City Hall from residents who have no heat in their homes. And for many, it's a problem of having no money to pay for the home heating oil. Tonight, Action for Boston Community Development announced that it will go to court on Tuesday to try to get federal money released to handle emergency heating problems. Tonight, I went.